So yeah, like Melissa said, my name is Justin, and uh, I have a co-founder of a small boutique web design and development shop in Campbell, outer San Jose area. Um, we do all kinds of stuff, and there's three of us there, and we're all kind of internet jacks. I uh, started out in design myself, um, doing print design, actually. Uh, still like print design. I'm glad I got the experience because it's helped me on the web with like typography and things like that. But taught myself programming along the way. Now I'm not even sure if I'm a designer anymore. I might be more of a programmer. Uh, I think I like it better these days. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I've been doing. Uh, I did a lot of Smug Mug. We don't do as much uh, is anymore these days. That market kind of shifted a year ago or so. Uh, but it's still there. But um, I've always done WordPress. I've always done content management systems in general. I've worked on some old ones and worked on some ones that are still around, like Drupal, that I don't really use as much anymore because I've really just became super lazy focused on WordPress. Um, so I don't know. In the, the course of this whole talk, it's kind of just a lot of my knowledge and working with different clients and content management systems and making them work for clients. And um, it's really focused about the actual design aspect of you know building a page and all that kind of good stuff. But so anyways, yeah, that's the uh, short end of my story. There's a lot to it. I could probably sit here all night and talk about me, but uh, it's not as fun, so I'll dive into some WordPress stuff. Um, so let's see here. We're building layouts for our clients. You can really build anything in WordPress. That's the cool, about, cool thing about it, or really any content management system. Um, but a lot of times you're going to be building like brochure-style websites or You'll see these long scrolling, you know, it's kind of the modern trend, these really robust home pages and things like that. Um, but that's great, you know, you may have a theme, it may be kind of hard to get that theme to do what you want it to do, so you're going to build like a custom page. Then you build a custom page and you hand it over to someone and they're like, oh great, but you know, I want to change something about it. And you're like, oh well, how do you do that? So that's kind of what I'm going to talk about right now. Uh, before I get started though, um, I know there's a lot of different people here too. I wasn't really sure who to gear this towards, so I'm kind of gearing it more towards like you're working for the client rather than building it yourself. So that's kind of the angle I'm taking. Um, and that's kind of uh, what this is about here, like why you'd want to build editable layouts. And there's, I don't know, there's a million different reasons, but um, there's uh, three that I've always run into. And one, you know, big one, if you're doing, you know, a small shop like us, it's not like we're always working with big clients. We do take on a lot of low budget clients. And they don't want to just keep having to hire us. And I don't want them to keep having to hire us sometimes because I don't have time for like small, teeny little changes. So if you can make the site as editable as possible and the pages as editable as possible, they can get in there and tweak stuff themselves to a point that they're not going to break it because we don't want them to break it because then they're going to come back to us. Um, <laughs> So that's one reason. Uh, other reasons for like bigger clients, uh, like mid to large clients, is mid to large size clients, is that the content can be updated without having to bother a developer. So being really a de development heavy shop, we'll get actually other like marketing departments from companies and they'll come to us and they'll be like, oh, here's a bunch of PSDs for all these landing pages. Can you build them? And we're like, great. And they're like, oh, but you know, the content's kind of there. We'll, we'll change it after you build it. And we're like, uh, okay, well, do you guys have anyone that does HTML? And it goes back and forth and yada, yada, yada. Uh, a couple of years ago is when we really started kind of thinking about this on that level. Like, okay, how are we going to build things for these marketing guys so they can just kind of go in there and change it as much as, you know, to a point, as much as they need to. Um, so that's the second reason. And then the third reason, again, with the marketing guys is they love the A-B test stuff. And they want to spin up new versions of the page and change colors of a button or remove a button or change, switch around sections and do all kinds of stuff. And we can, with some of the stuff I'm about to show you, allow them to do that um, on their own time. Um, so that's why we want to build editable layouts. And before I dive into everything too, I want to make a note about design versus editing. This is probably uh, hold near and dear to the graphic designers in the room is that we're not talking a lot about letting the clients actually design their pages because that would just be no bueno. You know, like they can't design the pages, it's going to look horrible. <laughs> 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 They're not designers. Um, so we'll design and build the pages for them. And uh, we're going to give them to 
the ability to like edit the content to a point, um, you know, that, uh, the pages that we've created. And at the end of the day, we're, what we're doing is we're creating user-friendly layouts for our clients. So they can actually go on there and do something with the layout that we created. It's not just a web page, it's stuck as a web page that we built. They can, you know, maybe the mar their marketing person is gonna go in there, they're the marketing person, or, or whatever. You know, a lot of times small businesses, their own marketing people, they know the, their business best. So anyways, we have the WordPress editor when we install vanilla WordPress site with no plugins. There's a few different ways that we have, but the most apparent to build layouts is the Word, or well, to build, to add any content is the WordPress editor. And it's a really good editor. It's the reason, because I was doing Joomla way back in the day, if anyone remembers that one. <laughs> and uh, the editor's, their editor was just a nightmare even from just doing basic pages and some simple formatting and just fall, fell apart. And WordPress is, didn't fall apart as much, and it really doesn't now. It's, I mean, some of the new stuff with the word, like cropping from Microsoft Word is just amazing. But um, so it's a really great editor. But at the end of the day, it's really good for writing like simple blog posts or you know blog posts or simple pages. Um, short codes. I don't know if any of you are familiar with those, but they're like basic codes that you can insert to like do some maybe formatting or add a feature like a pricing table or something usually additional functionality that a plugin will give you. For example, like a pricing table plugin. You can install, create your pricing table in that section that it adds, and then put a short code in that says, put this pricing table here, so you don't actually have to code up a pricing table. Um, they're great for that kind of stuff, but when you overuse them, and you know, it can almost look like my HTML example here, short codes if you try and build layouts with columns and rows and all kinds of different stuff. It's a nightmare, it'll break pretty easily. Um, and the last thing, writing HTML in the editor can be a nightmare because as soon as I hit this little visual button over here, a lot of this can just fall apart. Um, not all the time, but it's possible. And then if you try and edit stuff in the visual editor and you come back here, and it's just, and I hope nobody does this, and the reason why I gave the example is because I've actually inherited plenty of WordPress sites from other developers or clients that are like, oh, my developer disappeared here's the site, and then all their pages were in the WordPress editor and they were just like monsters. Um, so yeah, WordPress editor, fantastic editor, but not for building page layouts. Um, so we do have some alternatives. Um, the first two are actually built into vanilla WordPress and they're pretty awesome and they're pretty powerful and they're the, uh, the ones I'll be talking about the most. And the first one is custom page templates. Um, within a WordPress theme, you have a, typically have a file called page.php, and that's gonna be the HTML code that runs, um, that'll output the content for whatever page you create in the pages section. You can go in and define a template for your page that you can then select. So if I create a new page in WordPress, and then I can select my template, and it'll use that, and I know there's some new people here, so, that are familiar with WordPress UI, so I might as well just go in and bring up what I'm talking about. Here's, a, here's the pages section. And I have a couple pages here. And by default, I don't know if you can see it. Here we go. By default, the pages are usually on this default template here. There's actually no templates, well, unless your theme comes with templates, some some things may come with templates to do different things. But you can actually define your own template. And I, as you'll see, I have a couple here. I have an advanced custom fields example and post meta example, which we'll get into in a little bit. And then my FTP, that's hidden. Back here. You'll see I have AFC example and post meta example. And I just define those by throwing that little comment block there up top. So I'm not going, I'm just kind of trying to give you guys a general overview, not the whole school of WordPress here, but that's, uh, that's kind of what the custom page template will do. And, and uh, you'll, you'll see I'm, my, my layout looks actually different than if I go to the parent theme and I find my page there. That's just the basic thing. It's just outputting the content of uh, you know, the page content. But I went in here and actually built a custom layout. Super simple one, but anyways. That's kind of where all where that's all at. In case you're wondering what the hell I'm talking about. Um, 
So the, the first option is custom page templates where you can actually go and write your own, spin up your own HTML. You'll see I've done PHP in here, but you actually don't need to. Um, that's just for my example. You can just write HTML for a custom layout, choose that, and that's what will show. Um, but what makes it, what can make custom temp page templates really powerful is something called post meta. Um, that's a, also another feature of vanilla WordPress that I'm about to jump into in a second here. Um, and then our last alternative is page builders, which I'll talk about at the end. They're plugins for WordPress that allow you to do some whiz bang, drag and drop stuff. Um, and we'll look at that. Any questions? Oh, vanilla, I'm sorry. I know, okay. I'm, I'm trying to slow down. I talk a little fast sometimes. I'm just making sure I get the right Like vanilla, like plain, yeah, yeah okay. plain I, WordPress, I, I yeah. Because sometimes you can install WordPress and in you know, five minutes you've got 20 plugins installed and it's no longer vanilla WordPress and it's got all kinds of features, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I want to make sure it's really Excellent. All right, so there's that little thing I talked about post meta, um, and that's really what we're going to talk about with the whole custom pages piece. So post meta is like one of the most like awesome things about WordPress. Um, I mean, from like a development, building a website standpoint. Um, and it's super basic. It's just extra information tied to a post. Like if you want to say like, all right, here's my post and you know, there's car blue, you know, shoe size 12, whatever. You can do that with post meta. Um, it's just, a, this is a database row up here. And that's all post meta is. It's just like a row in the database. So you'll see it's there's the post ID. So I added a, a meta key called my meta key, and it's got all this norm ipsum as the value. Um, you don't actually need to add this through the database. Uh, that's just kind of like illustrating that each piece of post meta is another row in the database. Um, one of the things I love about it is that it can be anything you want from a basic text string. To, for the developers out there, it can be a complex object or an array or JSON or, or whatever. Um, but you can do a lot with it. <coughs> and then uh, it can be created or updated through the admin UI, which is also cool. Um, so there's like an easy interface to work with it without having to do any code on that level. Um, and then you can, um, you can also update it through this update post meta function. Um, and it's accessible through the get post meta function, which you'll actually need, and you'll see in a minute, um, that I'll show you to actually do something with this. Because you can input it through the UI, but to actually use it within your theme, you got to you get your hands a little dirty. But if you can hack up a theme and copy and paste some WordPress functions, then you should be able to do this step pretty easily. Um, so making use of post meta, um, again, going back to our custom page template, got to create one of those first going to echo the post meta values in your custom page template um, once you have your HTML spun up. And then you're going to create a new page, select your template as I showed you how to do, and fill in the post meta values. So that's kind of a lot to take in. So I'm, I set up an example for some of this stuff to actually just walk you through what I'm talking about. And it's kind of like high level, you know, I mean, it's one of these things you just have to do a bunch of times until you get it. But um, let's take a look at that. So. So we, we create our custom page template. And by doing that, it's simple. You go into your theme. I have a child theme here set up for this. Let's close all this. And so I basically just created a new, new file. It could be named whatever you want. Um, and it's called postmetaexample.php. Where the magic really happens is this piece right here. Your template name and then you can have that be whatever you want. And then that's how you can actually identify it in WordPress. Um, so I, what I did here is I wrote a little bit of HTML. Don't mind the PHP. It's pretty basic stuff for WordPress. Like this call here, the title outputs the title for the page that you enter in WordPress or the content, standard WordPress functions. But what I have done is I've created this little hero bar. Um, and then I've created just a standard content area. Um, Is there any way to make your code a little larger? Yeah. How about the font size? Oh, yeah. Ooh, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tempt me. <laughs> um, the most important thing about this, though, 
aside from all the HTML and standard WordPress stuff, is that I'm using this get that get post meta function right here to actually call something that we're going to input in a minute. Um, and I mean, this is pretty standard. You have to have the post ID there, and then this is your meta key um, that that will actually identify the piece of information that you put within the WordPress admin. And uh, I'm just spitting it out in an H2 tag, so it's like a custom subheading. I got my H1 for the title and then the subheading, and I've also got a background image that I'm throwing on this div tag here, and that little URL um, style attribute. So to put all that together and what that actually looks like, we'll go. So that's, that's what that looks like. Um, and I have the background image, I have the title, and I have the subheading that I put in there. And then this is just all standard content in the editor. And what that looks like on the WordPress end is title, standard content, and this nice little box down here called <laughs> custom fields. And that's where you're gonna work with your post meta in WordPress. And you'll see I have my Hero dash PG in my hero dash subheading. And in the, the BG one, I have a link to my background, and there's my subheading. And in the code, we got the hero BG right here being spit out through the git post meta, and we've got the hero subheading. So that's how you can translate custom piece of information from the WordPress UI into your page layouts. Um, it's about, I mean, it, it can get more complicated than that, obviously, we're building a simple page. Can you show us how to create a custom field on, in, on that page there? Create another one for me. Yeah, yeah actually, that's a good, good idea. So let's say I wanted uh, to have a button underneath there, right? Um, I could add, there's, there's a link down here. I know this isn't very contrasty, but um, down here it uh, says enter new. <coughs> Oh, that's that's a good point. Sometimes it may not be there. There's a screen up. There's a screen options up there. Um, I run. So, you know, that's a good question. It, it it may not be there by default. But if it isn't, you can just or any of this stuff for for that matter. You can just go ahead and show it there, and it'll pop up here. So if custom fields isn't available. That's where it is. Um, but yeah, no, that's a good that's a good point. I'll, I'll demo that. So. In this box down here, you actually have access to custom fields you've created before, or you can enter a new one. Um, I'm going to enter a new one right now and just call it my button. And I'll call it my button text. And we'll put click me for the values. So that's the name or the key for your meta field. And then that's the value. Click me. There we go. And then all you do is click add, and now that's in the database tied to your post. Um, so you can add as many as you want. Um, I can do another one that says my button link, and just do a google.com. So I have it, but it's not doing anything now, right? It's, yeah. Well, now I gotta, you know, now I gotta pull it out and do something with it. So, I'm just gonna create a link tag here, and I'll just copy this for sake of ease. And in the href attribute, that's where I'm gonna want my link, right? Yeah. So I can just go ahead and move that key and put my button link there, and then I'll go ahead and just copy that piece. So you can copy and paste a lot of this stuff. I mean, if you Google post meta, a lot of this information will be there for you to copy and paste. And then within the actual text of the, the link, I'm going to go ahead and put I'll do my button title. Text. Text. <laughs> text. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And go back to our page. And sure enough, there it is. Put me in this link. It's not styled. I could have put a class on it or two and 
through some CSS on it, but you get the gist. Um, so that's that's post meta. That's um, it's pretty powerful. I mean, there's like plugins you're using that you probably don't even realize are using post meta, like uh, like WooCommerce, you know, for all the products and all those kind of things. They're all storing all this additional, like you know, they're just their product is a post in WordPress, and it's just storing the additional data. So the price is a post meta. Right. I mean, I don't know the exact structure and where it's all. You know, it could it could be saved as an object, like the whole you know different products that are part of an order or something, but. It's in these little database rows that you can do this cool stuff. Is there um, a way to export and import that database? Um, yeah, I mean, there's yeah, there's a million different ways. I mean, PHP Madman, you can log in the back end and dump it, or you can actually go to WordPress as an exporter um, to export your posts, and it'll take this post meta with the post. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, it, it should be there. But there's one other cool thing uh, I want to point out, too, is that you know, this is cool, but like, what are you gonna do with it with just one page? But you're, what if your client's like, okay, I wanna build these pages, but I wanna have like a different heading on every different page. That's what's cool about this kind of stuff is it's all reusable. All I gotta do is do new page, another page, blah, blah. And then down here, I've got my custom fields, but it's empty since it's a new page, right? So again, we go down here, hero background. I need a link to an image, so I'm gonna go up here and grab one. Do the Golden Gate Bridge this time. Just copying the link right there. Paste it down in here. Added my custom field, so that should be there. Hero subheading. And another subheading. Publish my page. Let's view it. And it didn't work. Oh, you know why it didn't work? Because I didn't. Oh, didn't change the template. Didn't change the template. Ah, oh, there we go. That was, that's the default uh, WordPress page template. It just shows the title and the text. So now once I changed it to the post meta example template, it all goes according to plan. So there you go. So yeah, ta da! <laughs> it's magic. So yeah, it's pretty cool. You can you can make like reusable layouts that you can change the content in, and that's like the point of this is to, to make you know editable, reusable layouts. Um, and post meta is a fantastic way to do that. So any questions before I move on on stuff? Cool. <coughs> All right. So where were we? Did you making use of post meta? One over that. Here's where the fun starts. <coughs> um, so we looked at. Um, uh, post meta and what it can do, and there's another um, piece to this, to this building these editable layouts, and it's a plugin called Advanced Custom Fields. Um, and like it says up there, it's basically post meta on steroids. Um, it allows you to do all kinds of cool stuff with post meta that you can't normally do. Like, because as you saw, the the admin interface for working with post meta is just put in a key, put in a value, put in a key, put in a value. But it's like, what if you want to allow a client to add biographies to a page? And so your bi each biography is going to have like a photo and a title of the person and what they do with the company and a PDF to go along with it. And then the actual bio excerpt, you know, like so these like all this information. If I try to do that with the, the default post meta interface. I'm going to have what in like I have like 10 bios on a page. I'm going to have 50 of those fields. It's going to become super unwieldy. Um, post meta allows us to build interfaces, user-friendly interfaces for our layouts, for things like that. And all without writing any code to actually build these layouts, then your clients can go in and start pointing and clicking and changing things. It's pretty cool. Um, they can be as simple or as complex as you need them to be. I'm gonna show you creating a simple one and then I'll show you some complex ones we've built. Um, and the good thing about them is that accessing your data is similar to how we just looked at accessing post, post meta. Like you just, you know, calling those keys within your HTML saying, okay, go grab that piece of text or that image that I put in and spit it out here. It's that easy. And uh, another cool thing is that it's free. Um, it's a free plugin. It's got some paid features that make it super, even way more powerful um, than the free version. But the free version can get you pretty far. So advanced custom fields. So 
Um, to actually make use of advanced custom fields, we're going to go through the same steps of uh, creating a custom page template, um, spitting our values out, and then doing the whole create a new page, select your template, and fill in the fields. Um, the only difference is we're going to take this step here, the second step, and we're going to create an interface um, to do that. And you'll kind of see right here, um, I'm, this is where I'm creating an interface. And instead of looking at this keynote, let's just pop in there and see what it looks like to create an interface using advanced custom fields. So before I actually go to that, I want to show you what one looks like. I think that might be a little helpful. Um, so again, I have my editor here, but below it, I have hero background, and I have hero subheading as a field. A nice little interface. I can go ahead and just remove this and actually pop it up. So remember before I had to grab a link, now I actually have a button where I can just choose an image and see it here and I have a text field that says hero subheading uh, for the hero section of my page. Um, so a little bit more user friendly for your clients than saying, oh yeah, just type in this, this key in this custom field and, and then put a link there. You know, they can actually just go, oh, here's where the subheading goes. Click that and then choose your image. Um, so advanced custom fields can really make some super user friendly um, interfaces. And that's done by this little guy down here. I don't know if you can see custom fields tab that advanced custom fields adds. And you'll see I've already created a, a new field group as they're called. And here I have two fields that I created, the hero background field and the hero subheading. Um, Go ahead and pop one of those open. And it's pretty simple. You just put a label for it. There's your key, like your post meta key. You're saying, give me that hero background. That's what you're going to call. And then you can choose what type of field it is. And in this one, I chose an image field. I can mm -hmm. choose a file field. I can put a editor like the regular editor. And then all the standard fields, like the text area. And they've got even some more powerful stuff going on down here, too. But, um, We'll stick to the basics right now. So that's my background image field. And I have my subheading field. Um, all you got to do is click add field. Fill in, again, a hero button text. It'll pre-populate a key for you, so that's kind of that's kind of nice. I want it to be a text field. I'm going to close that one. Hero button link. Puts my, my key for me so I can pull it out in my code. And again, we'll make that a text field, so we'll just leave that. And just hit update. And then I'll refresh this page. And voila, now I can I have spots to put my uh, button text and my button link. And then I uh, I can go ahead and add that to my custom page template like I did before. And just to give you an idea of how similar that is to the advanced custom fields, with a little bit bigger text, of course. Um, the only difference is instead of, it's the same HTML. The only difference is instead of doing the get post meta call, I'm just doing the advanced custom fields, use something a little different, it's called the field. And it'll It'll just spit it out for you. Um, there's, there's a whole API for advanced custom fields if you're a programmer where you can do all kinds of cool stuff with it, um, like getting fields and looping through them and all that. But to just spit out text within your HTML, this, the field thing is pretty cool. Kind of like WordPress is the title. It just spits out the title, the field. That'll spit out my hero subheading right there in between those H2 tags. Um, do you have to add the uh, button text and the button link now? To yeah. The yeah, I'll go ahead and do it on this one. Why not? <coughs> so, again, just do our button markup. We'll actually give this uh, a class name, too. Just maybe a theme will pick it up. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, no, I think it was. Uh, yeah, there we go. Maybe. That's, that sounded more like it. <laughs> For a while. Um, all right, I'm just going to go ahead and paste that in there. And uh, hero button 
link. And here button text. And we'll go ahead and actually add some to my page. And hey, button primary, look at that. <laughs> And there we go. So um, yeah, same thing. So advanced custom fields, post meta, it actually allows you to create in your own interface for post meta. Pretty cool stuff. How is yeah. it? So if, if a client wants to change that click me to uh, download PDF or something like that, they can just go in, in the, in the back end interface you made for them and they don't have to do any coding. They can just yeah. place click me with download PDF. Right, exactly. And they can change it to a link of a PDF or they can upload another PDF and put that there and I mean I could even choose the advanced custom field fi uh, file type uh. for the button link and say oh okay I want to this button's always going to go to a file you know so I give them that option but you know that's the fun part about it what, what was that so you gave it a class that was already styled previously that that's your happen? good friend bootstrap uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah the theme has all the, the bootstrap button classes so it's, okay. I can't remember which one that was. Um, so that's that's pretty much simple advanced custom fields. Um, there's also what I like to call advanced advanced custom fields. Oh yeah. Hey, I, you know, this is old school web geek here and yeah. programmer. Uh, what happens when, say, uh, the client doesn't want one of those fields on the page? You're gonna have all this like. You can have all this HTML with nothing in it. So do you do you have ways to if is, statements? I mean, this so I there are if statements. There is like like logic, and they're saying, does this field exist for this uh, for this post? Or? Yeah, I mean, typically, again, I, I thank you for bringing that up. I should mention that, but I mean, um, Randy's right. I mean, typically you would wrap like, let's see. I don't mean to make your example no, tougher that, than it is. No, I mean that's that's a valid question. I mean it's some, I again yeah I, I kept these simple, but I mean by for all intents and purposes, you should be checking that data exists in fields. I mean you don't have to. I mean it's not the end of the world, but he's right. There will be empty HTML in this one. You know I may not worry too much if the background field was empty, right? Because um, that's not really going to hurt anything. Um, but you know, I could wrap it in an if this h2 tag in an if statement because that's probably going to add some extra padding um, and change the layout. Same for this this button stuff here. Um, you know, to be honest, I could actually add a field that even says enable hero, a little checkbox, and then just wrap this whole thing in a in an if statement that says if the hero is enabled, just spit out this whole piece. Um, so yeah, I mean, you, those are considerations that you want to take when building these editable layouts is like um, making them dynamic, like is a client going to even use this and all that kind of stuff. Um, of course, in a simple example like this, I may not worry about it too much, but Randy's just trying to make it hard for me. Just making it hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, very valid question. Um, and yeah, I guess you'll see some of that actually here in advanced, advanced custom fields. Um, <laughs> A squared. C. Yeah, A squared. Um, so there's a couple of cool things you can do with it. Um, contrast on this isn't as good, but you can kind of see here we've sectioned our fields with tabs. These are actually two tabs, and this is their management team, and they can add new executives and then their represent representatives, and they can add new representatives. So you can section your field with fields with tabs. Um, you can make any use of any post type with the post object field. Um, you know what, actually, before I go all the, through these, because um, I'm not going to show you how to build all these. I mean, a lot of this is, you're going to have to do some tinkering, but uh, at the end of the day, I definitely recommend if you're into WordPress and you want to try advanced custom fields, get in there and try it. Because, I mean, that's how I figured it out. I just started trying to build stuff with it. And you can do some cool stuff. So um, instead of all these boring demos, me fumbling around, I'm just going to show you cool stuff you can do with it. Um, starting with a client of ours, mind the dust, we're still trying to finish this site. But here's one of those examples where you got a lot of content on a page and they want to edit all of it. And this is this page right here. They want to edit all this, all these sliders. They want to be able to edit that image. They want to be able to edit all this text. 
text that comes up here, that image, mm. that text, that image. I don't think we expose that form, although probably ask us to, <laughs> <laughs> um, etc. So, good old friend, advanced custom fields to the rescue. Um, and we want to do it in a user-friendly format. So, like I said, a friend, advanced, advanced custom fields allowed me to make a couple tabs here. Because, I mean, even that much content would just start getting mayor faces like this long. Um, so we separated that page into three sections called text, backgrounds, and testimonials for that little testimonial logo slider you saw. And so it's just pretty simple. You got text for the masthead. You got the button text, the button link, text for the services section, and all the different, all the text on the page is editable through this. Then all of the good old backgrounds are editable for all the different sections. And there's where they can add their testimonials and the logos and all that kind of good stuff. And then, I won't bore you with the HTML for that one, it's a little weird, unwieldy, but um, <laughs> needless to say, advanced custom fields, we, we wrote the layout, we wrote it all, and then we made it editable afterwards. Um, it depends, but it's cool. Um, you know, they're a big company, they got a big marketing team, they want us to build this website and hand it over. Um, I don't know that they'll ever actually edit it themselves. <laughs> I've talked to them about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's something to consider when doing this kind of stuff, too. It's like, I mean, it adds time to do this. I mean, it's, you know, you can whip up all the HTML and CSS and JavaScript. I, you know, you got to tell your client, like, hey, if you want it to be, like, that editable, you're going to, it's going to cost money. Um, you know, it's going to cost extra time. Um, or you can just dive into some HTML and find the text and try and edit it. And or you can pay you. Or they can pay us, which they usually do. I mean, the, you know, that's the whole kind of argument with this kind of stuff. And I, I don't worry about it. I mean, it's like we're not losing our jobs to technology just yet. No one's built the button, as I say, to just press the button and voila, there's what your client asked for. That's when we're out of that's when we're out of a job. Um, How does that look on mobile with that, with that format? Yeah, this is all responsive, so it just oh, wow. scales down. Got to be responsive these days. Um, and then, so a couple of other examples on the Connor site are um, their team page, which, um, mind the stock, or never mind the stock photo, it's still in development. <laughs> but uh, here's the, uh, you know, this nice little layout we built for them. Uh, and they want to be able to edit all this stuff. Um, and then you got the representatives down here. And that's all editable. If I go to my pages and then I go to team. And another interface that we gave them, executives and representatives. So for the executives, you have a little bit more. You have like the executive name and their headshot and their bio and all that kind of stuff. And representatives, you just get a, a name. And a, they're not as important as the executives. So. They just get a photo and a name. Um, but yeah, that's, that's another, another little interface that we did there um, with tabs and all that kind of good stuff. Did that as a Why did you do it as a um post type? Yeah. It's a good question. Um, and I mean, there, will be, there are times when you kind of have to ask yourself that question, like, should this be an advanced cus or a custom field or should it be a custom post type? Um, you know, I mean, a custom post type adds like a whole other layer um, that probably wasn't necessary in this case, I guess. Um, a custom post type will add stuff up here. It's like, is it important enough that it needs to be in this menu? Is what I ask myself when creating custom post types, because that's a pretty important menu. Um, and the more you also hide that that element. You can create custom post types, so you have that's that true. data set for being able to separate out your data, but not making it necessarily accessible in the admin. That's a good point. So you can you can create it and then ha add it, but then if I created it, then I, where's my interface for like all these other pieces too, like uh, the executives, you know, and then maybe I'm, you know, the one add new executives and then I got all this other post meta tied to this post type. I guess I just felt in this place, it was really only used in one spot on the website. Maybe if I was gonna use the executives on other spots of the website, where it'd be, it need to be more dynamic in nature. Yeah. Um, well, take the testimonials for example. 
one of my pet peeves with some of the themes is a lot of testimonial slider like on their homepage and a lot of testimonial custom post type and you got like five testimonials but you got this custom post type. It just seems unnecessary um, to have that. But I mean, yeah, it's it's like one of those kind of gray areas where you just kind of got to weigh the... Right. There's a great blog post. Um, if I, I'm sure if you Google custom post types versus uh, advanced custom fields where a guy goes over all these points um, and yeah, kind of at the end says, you got to decide like what's going to be the best you know case for that. But I don't know. What do you think, Cole? I know you... Is that is that the right answer? It's like uh, this depends sorry, on. What was the question? <laughs> He's not paying attention. Uh, when when he, it, when yeah. he put him on the spot. Advanced custom fields versus post type. Custom post type. Um, personally, I see them as two two different things. Honestly, uh, advanced custom fields is good for being able to extend an existing post type, but if you're building something specific like an actual testimonial thing. I would consider that to be a custom post type because that's an entity of its own. It's a completely different data set than maybe what a page would be. Um, like WordPress out of the box provides five different custom post types. The most obvious one is posts and pages. Uh, you could take those and use advanced custom fields to do that. But personally, I think uh, just being able to separate out that data and being able to do some more efficient kind of uh, queries against the database so it all kind of depends, really. That's, that was kind of my answer, is that it does depend. Yeah. And I mean, I can, I can see that. I mean, the testimonial example for me sometimes is hard because people have like five testimonials on their, their uh, homepage, but a whole custom post type for, you know, five pieces of data, I just, and it only lives in one spot. That's where I'd say, okay, well, we're just going to put it in one spot. But, it could, yeah, I mean, it, it's, I mean, you could, there's, uh, on my last slide, it, I used the term, uh, there's more than one way to skin a cat, and there definitely is with WordPress. So, I mean, the, on a high, on like, I guess what, if you get it's like the low level, the, the one thing to take in consideration is, as far as performance goes, it's more expensive to query post meta than it is post types. Oh, that's a good. So, point. if you're doing a ton of post meta querying against the database, it's you're going to get a bit of a performance. Hit. Okay, that's a it's a very valid point. Thanks, Cole, for your expertise. What did you say? No, I'm just <laughs> What's expensive? <laughs> um, all right, so that's uh, that's one advanced, advanced custom field um, use case. The other is um, the post object field, like working with um, other posts, like within your within your existing posts, and what's called the repeater field. So I'm going to kind of show you those um, all in one kind of swoop here. Um, this is a website for a company that's uh, it's like a resource site we're building for uh, uh, accountants. It's called Revenue Hub. Uh, one of the things they want to do is on their home page. Oh, again, it's the same company, Connor Group, global accounting firm, Revenue Hub. Same bars you saw earlier. But um, they want to be able to show different different posts on their home page. They just they want to be able to choose and order like what posts are going to show up in these bars here. Um, so one of the things we did for them was on their home page uh, settings, which again they've got an, an interface we built for them for the home page. They got a tab called post bars. Um, and in there they've got um, where bar one content they can choose, they can add a post to it. Let's go add post and choose a post. And this is the repeater field. You've seen it already a little bit. Um, but this is part of the not free version of advanced custom fields. But it adds this thing where you can just add as many, as many, as many, as many as you want. Um, so you, and you can choose any post type. Like Cole was talking about, there's five, you know, five different post types um, that come with WordPress. Um, you may have installed a plugin or written your own post types. Um, for example, with these guys on any of their actual posts um, that show up in their blog, um, they can also, we, we have two post types that we created for them, one called comment letters and one called firm guides. They're basically just like collections of documents and stuff like that. 
but they want to be able to show that as related content on their posts. So we got them a little related content section here, and they can either add an article, which essentially is a WordPress post. They can add a comment letter, which is one of those custom post types and links to a PDF. Or they can add a fern guide, again, another, another uh, custom post type there. Um, so that's the repeater field. Just add, 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 add all day long. Um, pretty basic use of it, though. Um, another cool use of the repeater field is actually grouping fields within the re repeater field. And I'll show you, I'll show you, oh, I can't show you this interface because it's PHP. Well, um, I'll show you how it works. Um, these guys, we're building a plugin for them. It's, they want to be able to do these uh, trade and media sections for their, for their wine clients. Um, and each section does different things. Like awards and accolades, just a file list. Um, but the one that's really cool with the repeater field is the wine information. So they want to add different wines. And this is one where you could really argue custom post type. Um, but and I did it with advanced custom fields. Um, you go to the wine information. And down here, you can see we're just adding wines. They want to add another wine. You put the name, the vineyard, bottle shot, label, blah, blah, blah. And they can add as many wines as they want um, within, this, within this single page here. Um, and then, yeah, so that's the repeater field. You can, you can just repeat data all day long. And then on the front end, it's just going to come out in these different rows that you can go through. No, that's the, uh, that's the paid one. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's worth the money uh, 10 times over, that's for sure. Um, and so part of, part of the advanced, advanced custom fields, um, the last piece is uh, showing and hiding fields with conditional logic. Um, so we got all this stuff going on, but um, for example, Firefly's uh, trade and media plugin that we created here, um, they got all these different trade and media page types, um, press and materials, line information, collateral, that do different things. Um, so when they create a new page, they have a, a thing here called section type, and it can be a file list, or it can be a, the page can be a brand page, which does something different, or a file list or it can be wine information, or it can be gallery or biographies. And whenever you do that, it changes the interface. If I choose gallery, now I'm adding photos. You can add you know, multiple photos. If I choose biographies, now I'm adding biographies. Um, it's really user friendly. It's, it's, I mean, it's just, you're not jumping around to different parts of a, a UI. You're just all in one spot, making choices, going down the rabbit hole, filling in information. Um, so that's, um, yeah, that's the basics of advanced, advanced custom fields. So to do this with, uh, with the, uh, the key and the value pairs would be really, really hard and really cumbersome. It, yeah, I mean, it, 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 that's when it gets into arrays and uh, that kind of thing. You have to start doing for loops and um, loop through all the data and, and that kind of PHP. So I mean, it, it, that's why I call it advanced. That's why I didn't even really try and show you guys any examples because I mean, it is super high level. I was just kind of trying to show you what you can do with this stuff, um, and just you know the fact that you can just play around with it. I mean, even that basic example is like one of the funnest where you can just give to someone the ability to create like a a hero, a simple hero section on pages with uh, you know a subtitle and a button. You know that kind of stuff's pretty fun. It opens up a world of editing. Um, so any other questions on the band A squared? <laughs> oh, so I'll get to uh, which is a little bit funner in my opinion. Um, the last piece, well, not funner per se. It depends on how you look at it, but it's called using our uh, in page builders I mentioned earlier. And they're plugins that add point and click and drag and drop layout functionality to a WordPress site. Um, they're they're kind of controversial in a way, just because there's so many different implementations. Um, some of them good, some of them bad, a lot of them bad. Uh, a lot of them built into themes, probably not as good. I mean, it just the list goes on. Um, there are a couple good ones out there. Um, I made one of them. <laughs> yeah, we. Um, that little guy right there is our mascot. It's called the Beaver Builder, um, and he'll he'll help you build your WordPress site. 
Um, but aside from that, um, there are some pros and cons to using this type of piece on top of WordPress. Um, pros are you can create new pages quickly in the browser um, with little to no code knowledge. Um, by some code knowledge, I mean you may create a page with Page Builder and then you know, throw maybe some CSS on top of it to like style some things differently. Because um, a good page builder is not going to have every single design option under the sun. Um, and just, it's too, cumber too cumbersome. Um, clients can visually edit pages on the front end, so instead of having to go search for stuff in the admin, they can just go to the front end, click on some text, and change it. Um, and then you can easily switch your theme um, while keeping your page layouts intact. <coughs> um, the cons are that there, it's, it, is, it isn't as flexible as good old fashioned HTML and CSS. I mean, at the end of the day, like obviously I have a page builder, we use it, I'll show you some of the sites we built. Um, but we've also done some other stuff like advanced custom fields or just spun up pages and didn't even make them editable. Um, so I mean, it, it can be quick, it can be good, but at the end of the day, it may not be as flexible as you need it to be. Um, and then it also allows clients to create hideous pages in a few clicks because clients aren't designers. And, you know, next thing you know, they've got all kinds of purple and yellow and green and blue and it looks like a rainbow. Uh, we don't want clients to have too much design power. Anyways, um, I'll finish up by showing you some examples um, of what our page builder can do and then I will let you be on your merry way. Um, oh wait, actually I have one on the link demo. <clears throat> so with our page builder, it adds another link up here. Um, a lot of them, different page builders, add some way to activate it. Um, ours also adds in the admin um, by the text editor. There's either the ability to use the text editor or just click page builder. And it'll take over the text editor. And it'll launch the page builder. <coughs> and you got some other stuff here. You've got your different row layouts you can drop drop in. You can drop in a heading or a photo or any of this kind of good stuff. You can click on stuff to edit it. Is that basically what, what MailChimp is? Basically this kind of format? You just drag and drop stuff in? Yeah, this is a little bit more advanced than MailChimp. For example, oh. like with MailChimp, you know, like they don't um, well, I mean, MailChimp is pretty powerful, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a it's a WYSIWYG editor, you know. I mean, it's we, we haven't recreated the wheel. We've just tried to do a better job than some some of the other folks have on WordPress, because you know we're shopped and we're frustrated with using some of the themes out there that give you design options and and all that kind of stuff. And we're like, you know, we could probably do this better, and we want one for ourselves, and we're gonna and build it and, and have it out there available for other people as well. Like, if I want to change that photo back there. Pretty simple, um, you know. Even if I wanted to make that background parallax, for example, and change the you know the padding on it so it's like a little less, you know, it's got it's got some advanced options and that kind of thing. Um, so you can you can really design pages and some reason my background's not showing up, um, but you can design pages in the browser pretty easily. Um, you know, I can go ahead and there's all kinds of Different stuff in here, um, you know, like accordions and call that. These are you know call to actions, and you can add some HTML, add a gallery, all that. Um, so, are you? This, I mean, if, if you're starting from scratch, you I'll show you with WordPress, and then are you using Bootstrap in there, and then putting Page Builder on it, or are you just putting Page Builder in WordPress? In WordPress. So that's the nice thing. It works with any theme, or at least the plugin ones do. There's some some themes have Page Builders built into them, which is, you know, I mean, you'd be wary of just because, I mean, there's some good ones out there that are simple, like this new theme called Make um, by Thief Foundry because they make really good, really simple stuff. Um, there's other ones that are really complex, um, and next thing you know, you're trying to change your site and your layouts are just tied to this theme, and they're kind of lost. These are more, these are plugins, so you can choose any theme. You install WordPress, install a theme, install a page builder, and start building your page layouts. It's not going to do like your header or your footer or any theme design for you. And it still works on a child. Yeah. Child. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I mean, you don't need a child theme. You can install a theme and not touch the theme and just use this. But here's like with where I'm starting from scratch, you know, on one of these. I, I'll start by, you know, dropping in a row. Um, and then I can go ahead and drop maybe a text editor in there and start writing, you know, writing my text. Can't type right now. And uh, you know, put in, put in a heading. My 
heading choose a size for it. It's the top on the page, so I want it to be an H2 or H1 tag and center it. Um, you know, go ahead and give my row background, you know, either give it a color or a photo or a video or a slideshow. Um, but you know, they're, um, they're visual editors at the end of the day. You can choose to do some of this stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, you just go to town and build pages. Um, we have a lot of pre-built templates in ours, so um, which make it kind of a little bit easier to get started so you're not designing from scratch because designing from scratch can be a little difficult sometimes anyways, even in Photoshop or wherever you're at. And there are a lot of like standard simple layouts. Um, another problem I have with a lot of themes on the internet these days is that they have like everything under the sun and I'm like trying to choose one for a client and I'm like, who uses these like layouts? I mean, they're like, you know, like maybe the web designer that built it, but I mean, there's like all kinds of crazy like pages that are this long that don't have actual content that my clients would use. So what we try to do is like just keep it, you know, just keep it simple, stupid. Um, just really simple page layouts. Oh, we do have, this one's pretty generic. I don't know how many people are selling iPhone apps like this anymore. But again, it's simple. Doesn't have everything under the sun. You can edit, you know, the stuff. You can change the photo on here pretty easily. Um, and then when you're done, you just hit the publish changes. And away we go. There's your page. And just some examples of what we've done. Again, this is the site we're working on, but this is all built with the, the page builder, this home page. Some parallax stuff. A lot of text. They gave us a wall of text and told us to make a home page out of it. <coughs> I was like, okay. Um, Pretty simple stuff. You'll see, I actually on the services page, spun up my own table. That's not a module, that's just some HTML and CSS table. Made it responsive, so it changes a little bit. But so yeah, you can combine a page builder with a lot of stuff. This site's done with the page builder too. Um, so I mean, the, po the, the, po the, the possibilities are endless. They're not so endless. Um, I was actually working on this one and I didn't discard my changes. Look at that. That's another nice thing about it too is this is the live version. This is the one I'm working on. That's another thing, cool thing that WordPress can't do so much is once you publish a page, it's kind of published. This one has draft states within published pages. Kind of neat. But anyway, so that's, that's page builders. Um, like I said, I mean, take them or leave them for what they are. They are an option to consider, especially for budget conscious clients the want basic sites or even for your own sites. I mean, we use, we used it to build the actual Beaver Builder website. Like all of our pages are just like page builder pages. Um, so, um, you know, it's got us time in this place. All these pieces do. And that brings me to my conclusion, which is, like I said earlier, there's definitely more than one way to skin a cat with WordPress. Um, you'll see, a million things done in a million different ways. There are definitely best practices and all that kind of good stuff. Um, it's, um, yeah, that's why it's so cool, because you can just tweak it, tweak it till it squeaks and make it do what you want. Um, there's, you saw, there's different solutions for different situations. Um, the simple post meta, the simple advanced custom fields, the advanced advanced custom fields, the page builder, um, they're all kind of different solutions for different situations, just based on you know what you feel is gonna work or what your client requirements are. Um, post meta is a simple yet powerful feature of WordPress. Super simple, just like one database row. Um, advanced custom fields open up a world of possibilities as we saw and page builders can allow you to create editable pages quickly. And that's my spiel. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something and Boy, all the best. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Definitely, yeah. I mean, especially since one day website and you can spin up some stuff pretty quick. So in the in browser. Minutes, not in months. Oh yeah, that was our marketing guy. <laughs> Try not to make it too, too cheesy, but <laughs> you know those marketing guys. Any questions? Oh, the child theme? Yeah. Um, no, I mean, you don't want to edit a parent theme. Um, I mean, unless it's a theme you created. But if you buy a theme from a shop and it's going to get updated, then you make any changes to it, those changes are going to disappear. Right. So a child theme will allow you to make your changes there, and then they'll always live there. Um, if you're using a page builder, you're, you may not be editing the, the actual theme um, files at all. Because you're just doing all your work within this. It's like living on top. I, I guess I don't quite get what it's. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's taking the WordPress posts that you create, and it's using all that fun post meta stuff we talked about, and it's storing all this data in them for the layout. And that would be separate from anything that WordPress says, you know, 2012 or whatever. We're changing it, we're updating it. But your stuff would live on top of it. It lives in the database, and those. It's its own little. Yeah, and those little spot. post meta. Yeah, the yeah. theme itself isn't being touched. But let's say you want to write some CSS, which I mean, if you're using a page builder, I mean, and you're a designer, you're probably writing CSS still, because I know I use it a lot and I still write, I have a decent sized set style sheet. Mm -hmm. By the time I'm done with the site, I'll do that in a child theme. Um, I may add some page templates for one reason or another. And I'll, so any, yeah, any changes you make to, that you need to make on the theme level within like that theme folder should happen in a child theme, unless it's like a theme you're creating from scratch. <laughs> no, that's yeah, yeah, but yeah, you, you want right, to be able to. Definitely, yeah, that's a good question. Definitely want your themes to be able to be updated and not overridden. Shoot. So when I asked about that button, when you said it was bootstraps, does that mean you just take bootstrap.css, you copy and paste all that into like a child style sheet, so then you can. Name uh, no, I wouldn't. I'd probably. Um, well, WordPress has what you you call some. Uh, you can enqueue your scripts. Um, it's a PHP function that spits it out at the right time in the right spot. It's pretty standard. I mean, if you're going to hack up WordPress themes, and it's a pretty, if you Google that, um, WP and NQ scripts or styles, excuse I'll me. I'll show you. Show them. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's, I mean, you put it, you put the bootstrap CSS in its own CSS folder in your child theme. Okay. Um, and then you just use that to spit it out in the, the right spot within the, the parent theme. Wow. But yeah, I mean, because you, you, you typically don't want to uh, just copy and paste third party libraries in your own style sheet. Um, you know, I mean, that's for your styles, you know. Um, yeah. At the end of the day, you can use a caching plugin and it'll just scoop them all up and put them all together and your site's super fast. Cool. Oh, shoot. Why did you choose? Um, I would have liked to have used it on Connor Group a little bit. Um, some of those pages, some of the stuff is a little complicated. But we didn't have it when we started Connor Group. They've been slow. I mean, that site's been done for like three months, but they just, the images are like it. <laughs> and I'm like, I hit, I hit up Markham every week, and he's like, oh, Jarvie, she knows the guy. Yeah. She's like, Jarvie's been traveling. I can't, he's like, you know, I can't get the images from him because he wants them to all be Jarvie's with a couple really? beans and nieces. And I'm like, can we just pick some stock and launch a site and change the images afterwards? But <laughs> so that's one reason. Um, but yeah, I mean, it all depends. If I can do it with the, a page builder, I will, um, just because it's quick and it's easy. I don't have to write a lot of code, just in CSS. Um, if it's going to get complicated, I know the client's going to want to just rip things apart and add in all kinds of stuff that I'm going to need to write a million lines of JavaScript and PHP for. I won't use it. Um, so it's just yeah, it's just. It depends on the situation, really. Um, but we got the one client, though. It's like a client that we do a lot of sites for. They're actually, now they kind of they get it. Um, they're like a bigger agency. And they'll be like, oh, you know what? We want this site done with the page builder, because they know how quick we can do it. Like, that was the one with the, uh, all the text on the home page. It just like, threw us a bunch of images, threw us a bunch of text, like, it builds a, build, a page builder site that looks nice. I'm like, cool. Spun it up you know, in like, a couple hours. Um, so yeah, and you can educate your clients on those kind of options too. You know, you're like, all right, we can pick a theme, we can get a little like you know our hands dirty with a page builder, 
you know, we can get in Photoshop and design you a site from scratch and have a developer build it out. If you need to be editable, we can do that. So it's kind of like, you know, you got to educate your clients on like, you know, what what you're building. I'm like, what was the thing with the the tailor you were mentioning? Um, oh. Build you a two hundred dollar suit or, or yeah, a, a two thousand dollar suit. Comparing building a site to buying a suit. Yeah, yeah. It could be a two hundred dollar suit or a two thousand dollar suit, but never buy a two hundred dollar suit. <laughs> I have a two hundred dollars suit. <laughs> <laughs> is the feature of being able to have the client edit their own site an effective part of your business model? Is that something you found the client interested in doing? Um, yeah, I mean, there's yes and no. I mean, there's the bigger marketing guys, like at some of the, the bigger, especially the startups that are like super hands-on, like A/B testing, like they want to change everything all the time and do metrics on everything. They really like to like the advanced custom field stuff because they're changing like different headlines and adding things and whatnot. Um, the page builder is pretty new. We haven't done that with any of our bigger clients. Well, except for the one like retainer client who feeds us sites and knows about it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I like I said, I, 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 tell, I school clients on that. I'm like, do you need this to be editable? You know, I mean, if we can make it editable, like if, we're, if we decide just to build a site with a page builder because that's what the client kind of wants anyways. And we're like, oh, we could get what they're looking for at the page builder, we'll just do it. And then they'll just have an editable site. But um, yeah, I mean, if they ask for it, I'll typically be like, do you need this? Um, you know, it, it depends. And, and then it depends on what you're building too. I mean, like that Firefly, tr Firefly trade and media section, that's not even landing pages. That's like just different sections of the site that have different like content structures that they need to edit, you know I mean? They're going to use that for like 50 different clients and, you know, the 50 different content scenarios. So, um, yeah, to answer your question, I guess it's like what I've been saying all night. It depends on the situation, really. It's kind of hard to put it, you know, one word answer on that one. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. You have a question? Uh, about page builders, do you just go to uh, WordPress.org and look for plugins and put page builder in? Get yeah, there's some free, some premium. Um, if you want to write down, just because I have one, which ones I think are good. Sure. Um, there's one called Moto Press. Um, it's actually pretty decent. Not too bloated, not too crazy. Can actually do some nice stuff. Um, M O T O. Um, P Press, yeah, Moto Press. Um, they're, I think they do have a premium version. A lot of the free ones that are any good have a premium version. I haven't really looked too deep into that. But uh, another one is called Live, Live Composer. <coughs> um, those are the two that have really impressed me and that I've used to a degree um, that are these like page builder plugins. There's, let's see. Um, these, are what, these are WordPress page builder plugins for WordPress themes. Yeah, yeah, you can use it with any theme. You can install it in WordPress. And these are, those two I mentioned are free and I believe in the WordPress repo. Could be wrong. Um, but those are two that have really stood out to me as someone who's like, obviously researched this a lot and like really holds that kind of stuff to a high standard. Um, and then there's one I hate to, to rag on because it's like one of the most possible, popular, but it's called um, Visual Composer. But that one's always seemed a little less user friendly to me and a little harder to get right. I think it's better these days. Probably a year ago it wasn't as good. I don't know. Yeah. I don't use it anymore. I have my own. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another one that I want to throw in there is called uh, Pods Framework. Uh, it was kind of one of the original page builder uh, plugins out there. Uh, okay. I believe it works with any theme. Uh, one of the um, co founders of that plugin just joined our company recently. And oh, nice. They've been kind of diving into it. They've been around for a while. I've heard about that one, is it? What? What's it called? Pods. P O D. And then another thing that you can also take into consideration is uh, there's the customizer tool that uh, yeah. has been starting to be really ramped up more uh, within the core, mm -hmm. uh, like within like the last few versions. And that brings kind of a WYSIWYG sort of editor to your theme, uh, but your theme has to support it. So it's not quite as pluggable as some of these um, page builders. So if a, if a page builder is kind of a little bit more beyond what possibly your client is looking for, 
there may be uh, some really good themes out there that support the WordPress customizer. Uh, if you want to take a look at that, you can actually just go into your admin area and go under appearance, and you should see an option that says customize. And it's a full visual of your, of your website. You can sit there and click and pull it out. change colors and stuff. Uh, you know, my well. my last job when I was working at uh, Maker Media, we heavily used that for our home page. So our editors can go in and switch out layouts, uh, whatever posts are being displayed, and stuff like that. It's a, or there's a big blue button right there, too. On the yeah. Home page I'm going to switch to the the default theme because ours doesn't really make it wasn't now that they have panels I want to rewrite our options page yeah. for it and yeah I'm, I got yeah. some plans for it and with the, the most recent uh, version of WordPress they've now rolled it out to where you can use the customizer with your navigation uh, and your post meta stuff now yeah, or widgets so here's here's what he's talking about this is more of a theme level too um, it's uh, it is on page level in terms of like widgets and things like that there are some talk about editing posts in here, but then they got the yeah. front end editor, and I'm like, that's. Yeah, they got some conflicting things going on. Right? Yeah, <laughs> well, WordPress does have what's called a front end editor coming too, it's, and it's pretty awesome. But again, it's it's the editor, it's the you know the text editor. They're doing some cool stuff with short codes and previews, and the experience on that's really going to be awesome. What I was showing you is more on the hey, I'm going to build a landing page with all this whiz bang stuff going on on it. Um, that you know, I mean. I don't think Core will ever really add that level of stuff. I mean, WordPress is supposed to be light. I mean, but who knows where we'll that's going. What's that? We'll be there as a plugin. Yeah, yeah. There's always, everything's always a plugin. But anyways, um, like Cole's saying, each theme is going to have a different um, section in the customizer um, and offer different uh, options that they make available for different things. This is the um, 2014 WordPress theme that comes with WordPress. And for example, um, you can change like the background color of your site. And see it previewed. Should preview. Good preview. What's going on, call wise in a preview? Some of them have an Ajax callback. Some of them you gotta get it kind of weird. That was the header, wasn't it? Well, I see that the uh, site title changed. Yeah, the site title you saw changed, but for some one reason the background color didn't. Yeah, you know, but sure. who knows? We'll call Matt after this and ask him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's some, some slight clunkiness. It's still a fairly new yeah. feature, but uh, that, that's also another possible option if, uh, uh, that you can also look into. Well, I think it's a good one to keep an eye on, too, because it's it's been around for a while, but um, just with the new APIs that they added, it's some new <laughs> stuff. Like I was saying, like our theme doesn't really make much use of it. Um, we have our own like different options page, but now that there's some of those new APIs that we can build cool stuff into it for all, the theme level, I showed you a lot of the page level. We're talking more or less the shell of your site. A lot of that's going to start happening here in some pretty cool ways. So keep an eye on that. Thanks, Cole. Yeah. All right. Any more questions? <laughs> awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, thank you, Justin. That was awesome. Thanks. Um, Thank you.